Hey guys, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Final Fantasy Bestiary. This series is dedicated towards discovering the history and lore behind Final Fantasy's most iconic creatures and characters. This episode, we will be focused on the Warrior of Light. Keep in mind, there may be story spoilers here for certain Final Fantasies. Now this is a bit different from the bestiaries that I usually do. The Warriors of Light have no real life history to be based on and is instead a recurring theme exclusive to the Final Fantasy series. A Warrior of Light is someone who was chosen in any way, shape, or form by the crystals of their world to restore balance. They are always the primary heroes of the games they are featured in, and thus are always playable. Now while the Warriors of Light are considered a Final Fantasy hallmark, they're not as common in the main series as one would think. After the early 8-bit days of gaming, when deeper stories were a little bit harder to tell, this generic theme was thrown to the wayside in pursuit of more meaningful character development that wasn't based on fate or destiny, but instead a free-flowing story of characters whose lives eventually led them to be the saviors of the world. However, Four Warriors of Light were the main characters of the original Final Fantasy, whose goal was to defeat the four fiends of each of the four elements to restore light in the world. Each of them carried a crystal, which is a major aspect of having the title of Warrior of Light. While normally the character names are entirely up to the player, the novelization did give them four names, Zest, Sauber, Dewu, and Flo, which, to be honest, I think I'll just forget and keep calling them the Warriors of Light. Square Enix uses the generic Warrior of Light look in Final Fantasy 1 and makes him a character in Dissidia Final Fantasy to represent the hero of the Final Fantasy 1 universe. Thankfully for us, the title Warrior of Light wasn't given to anyone in Final Fantasy 2. I guess it would be pretty ridiculous if the Warrior of Light was punching himself in the face to get stronger, right? However, in Final Fantasy 3 they return, basically fulfilling the same goal that they had in Final Fantasy 1. They travel to each of the four crystals and eventually to the World of Darkness to save the world. While in the World of Darkness, they also meet the Warriors of Dark, who serve the same purpose as the Warrior of Light, except that they protected their world from the power of light. Each type of warrior exists in order to maintain balance, not to overtake the other, so they become allies to defeat the Cloud of Darkness. Again, in the original game the Warriors of Light are nameless, but in the DS version they are given names and backstories. Again, Final Fantasy IV was skipped as they approached the story with more meaningful character development than in 1 and 3. But Final Fantasy V was kind of an experiment in combining the two aspects of using the generic Warrior of Light term, but still making each character unique and developed. In Final Fantasy V, we were also introduced to the Warriors of Dawn, who saved the world once before. Dorgan, one of the four Warriors of Dawn, had a son named Bartz, who is the main character of Final Fantasy V. He eventually rises up and becomes a Warrior of Light, alongside Lena and Ferris, Galoof, Another one of the original Warriors of Dawn joins them for most of their crusade, until his downfall causes his daughter Krilly to become the final Warrior of Light. Final Fantasy V's combination of the two aspects was considered a beloved success by many classic Final Fantasy fans, but it did still lack some of the storytelling that Final Fantasy IV had before it, which even today is considered to be one of the best Final Fantasies of all time. So in favor of really working on developing each character to their fullest, they completely abandoned the theme for the main number series for many, many years. While the term was still used in handheld and offshoot games of the series, it became an overall uncommon term that anyone who started playing Final Fantasy around 7 or 8 wouldn't have known unless they went back and played the originals. It was briefly mentioned as the Knight of Light in Lightning Returns by an NPC outside of the Slaughterhouse, but it was little more than a nod to the old games. However, Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, brought the term back into modern day Final Fantasies. It was a term used to describe the heroes who vanished the day the Calamity took place, and is the name given to them since anyone who tries remembering them simply sees a flashing light, although the god Hydaelyn does refer to the characters as a Warrior of Light. A Warrior of Light, also known as a Legacy character, possesses a tattoo on the back of their neck, and the chocobo they owned before the Calamity possesses it as well. Towards the end of the game's initial story, Legacy or not, every player is referred to as the Warrior of Light. The resurrection of this title seemed to work well for the MMO, since every adventurer was designed to be the centerpiece of the story, and thus created their own backstory that didn't need to be explored too deeply themselves. Instead, they could work on developing a cast around the Warrior of Light while still making the game reminiscent of a classic Final Fantasy game. But after that, and other than that, other than being featured in several of the handheld games of the series, the Warrior of Light hasn't been a common aspect of most of Square Enix's RPGs. However, 
Their most recent use of the term in the game Bravely Default was very well received, and it's considered to be one of the greatest uses of the term in the entire series, since it is technically a Final Fantasy game. One last thing, I don't know about you guys, but when given the option to name my Warriors of Light, I go with Mr. Happy, Mr. Happy 2, Mr. Happy 3, and Gordon. Damn you, Gordon. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Go check out the rest of the Best Jerry series as well. And, of course, be sure to tune in next time. And until then, take care.